God's word declares, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Psalm 34, 19. Christians need deliverance as much as anyone. They have as many reversals and difficulties, but one thing a Christian has that the world cannot know. Many afflictions, sure, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. No exception. Deliverance from them all is God's guarantee. Yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 2 Tim 4.18 The Lord keeps you from all evil and preserves your life. Psalm 127.7 You, God, have allowed me to suffer much hardship, but you will restore me to life again and lift me up from the depths of the earth. Psalm 71.20 They, the godly, may trip seven times, but each time they will rise again. But one calamity is enough to lay the wicked low, Proverbs 24, 26. Even when I walk through the the dark valley of death, I'll not be afraid, because you're close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me, Psalm 23, 4. The Lord's my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord protects me from danger, so why should I tremble? 27.1 Psalm. What's the bottom line? The Lord is for me, so I'll not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord's my strength and my song. He's become my victory. Psalm 118, 6 and 14. That's encouraging. Here's a word of encouragement brought to you by the Encouragement Center in Layton. Now here's Pastor Mike. The word declares, How great is thy goodness, which thou hast stored up for those that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for those who take refuge in thee before the sons of men. Psalm 31, 19. God has fabulous goodness just stored up for us who revere the Lord, just waiting to be released on us who take refuge in the Lord. We who are waiting for his goodness to be seen in front of the people of the world. And what goodness do you suppose is stored up for you? Christians don't have to be as eager as the world to seek their food, shelter, and security. For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Matthew 6.32 Remember the word states plainly that God will give you all you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Matthew 6, 33, 34. Jesus stressed in his words, I assure you that everyone who's given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news will receive now in return a hundred times over houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and property with persecutions. And in the world to come, they'll have eternal life. Mark 10, 29, and 30. Bottom line, just Take delight in the Lord, and he'll give you your heart's desires. Psalm 37, 4. What a deal. That's encouraging. A word of encouragement is brought to you each weekday by the Encouragement Center in Layton. Pastor Mike Davis invites you to enjoy more of the Word Sunday morning at the 1045 Encouragement Service. Drive a little, be blessed a lot at the Encouragement Center. That's the Layton First Church of God, located at 6258 East Murphy in Layton. God does His Word, so be encouraged. Wednesday, December 19. God's Word declares, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the vast whatever or his whatever with him. For there's a greater power with us than with him. 2 Chronicles 32, 7. You know, the kingdom of God is not about the common things most people work for. Meat, drink. It's really about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans fourteen seventeen says. This kingdom is all about Jesus Christ. To those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the mighty power of God and the wonderful wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians 1.24. Our ministry is not characterized with fabulous oratory, but with very plain preaching of a plain and simple message of deliverance through Christ. 
Indeed, the Holy Spirit is powerful among us so that you might trust the power of God rather than human wisdom, 1 Corinthians 2, 3 through 5. The kingdom of God is not just fancy talk. It's living by God's power, 1 Corinthians 4, 20. What's extraordinary about our walk with God is that the Lord's power will actually work best in our weakness, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. The remarkable thing about living for the Lord is that we can cash in our weakness for his strength made perfect. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong, 2 Corinthians 12, 10, C. Anything that brings out our weakness in Christ nets us greater power. That's awesomely encouraging. Thank you, Lord. At the end of me, I find you. And that's encouraging. Thursday, December 20. God's Word declares, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. 1 John 4.14 Yes, that's what we're thinking about this time of year, isn't it? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And this time of year, as no other time, we just love to reflect on the fantastic grace flow from God to us in giving his only Son to be our Savior. And what a Savior! My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Luke 1 47. Why did I rejoice? For we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed to the Christ, the Savior of the world. John 4 42. Because I've experienced him myself, I personally know him as Lord and Savior. He's come into my heart and made things new. What a wonderful Savior. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17. What a wonderful Savior. But the presence of the Lord within makes me know that he's more than just my Savior. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 10.10. There are many others who are lost and do not yet know his love and forgiveness. And how will they ever hear without a preacher? How will they ever understand unless somebody explains or tells them? Fact is, he saved us, as Psalm 106, 8 says, Nevertheless, he he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. Through you and me, he wants love, his love, his forgiveness, and eternal life his power to be made known to those who don't know him yet. May we explain to our friends, relatives, and neighbors, God so loved them that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. That's so encouraging. December 21, Friday. God's word declares in 2 Timothy 1.9, that he hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. God has always had a plan before he even created the earth and the galaxies, a plan to save us and to use us to make his love and forgiveness known to others who are seeking. Now, of course, during the Christmas season, we know it's all about Jesus. But it always enthralls me to reflect, just think a moment on it, not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Titus 3, 5 through 6. The Lord loved us before the creation. He even foreknew man, he foreknew man would, would flop and flop badly, and he still went ahead with his plans. He still created man and gave man free will and freedom to choose him or reject him. And even though he knew it would cost the price of Jesus' own lifeblood, God thought we were worth the investment. He went ahead and Jesus came and Jesus lived and died and delivered us all. What love, what thoughtful caring, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Christmas, indeed, is an awful, A-W-E, awesome, (laughs) awesome reality. Jesus promised, Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. John 6, 47. That's encouraging. Monday, December 24. God's word declares this Christmas Eve, 
For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. The gift of God, eternal life, by grace through faith. It's a gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. Isn't it amazing how easy the Lord has made it to get into heaven? It isn't easy. It wasn't easy for him to ensure it. But God, who's rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you're saved. Back to Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9. It's so simple. Again, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16, what a Savior. Simple as ABC, confess, believe, accept. Confess you're a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Believe, believe that God loves you enough to have ensured your entrance to heaven through Jesus' Son, who paid the price for all our sins, the perfect Lamb of God dying for us on Calvary's tree. We believe that Jesus died, was buried, and miraculously was resurrected on the third day. And now, now, because he lives, we shall live. Confess, believe, accept. Ask Jesus into your heart, into your life. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and for rising from the dead for me. Thank you for the free gift of salvation. I accept. I ask you into my heart. Come in and live and reign as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. That's so encouraging. What a blessed Christmas Eve. Redo, Tuesday, December 25. God's Word declares this Christmas Day, God showed how much He loved us by sending His only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through Him. This is real love. It's not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. 1 John 4, 9 and 10. And that's really what Christmas is all about, isn't it? Dear friends, since God loved us that much, We surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love has been brought to full expression through us. 1 John 4, 11 and 12. We love each other as a result of his loving us first. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we've not seen? And God himself has commanded that we must love our brothers and sisters too, in 1 John 4, 11 and 12, 19 through 21. This wonderful Christmas day, we surely do know that everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and really, that isn't difficult. For every child of God defeats this evil world by trusting Christ to give the victory in him. And the ones who win this battle against the world are the ones who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And this is what God has testified. He's given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So whoever has God's Son has life. Whoever does not have his Son does not have life. 1 John 5, 1 through 5, 11 and 12. What a gift. God's Son. Life and life more abundant here and now. Thank you, Jesus. That's encouraging. Wednesday, December 26. God's Word asks, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, height, depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 35, 37 through 39. But I'm trusting you, Lord, saying you are my God. My future is in your hands. Psalm 31. The love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children. Psalm 103. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. Psalm 31. We know how dearly God loves us because he's given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Romans 5, 5 through 6. God's bottom line comes when the Lord says, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Jeremiah 31. God showed how much he loved us by sending his only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. It's not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. 1 John 4, 9 and 10, 16. That's sure encouraging. Thursday, December 27. God declares in his word that he delivers his children. And when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God. Isaiah 43, 2 and 3. The New Living Translation makes it more crystal clear. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God. You know, God's people, God's people can say his deliverance is the norm. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God will go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire. They aren't even hurt by the flames. And and the fourth looks like a divine being. And then the princes, prefects, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Daniel three twenty-five and 27. Listen, the Lord will deliver me from every evil deed and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. 2 Timothy 4.18. That's encouraging. Friday, December 28. God's word declares, I am trusting you, O Lord, saying, You are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servant. In your unfailing love, save me. Psalm 31, 14 through 16. Deliverance is a common experience for the godly. The Lord just keeps extricating them from impossible circumstances. Life can really get oppressive sometimes, and not infrequently circumstances seem to bury us. Save me from my enemies, Lord. I run to you to hide me. Psalm 143. Nothing's impossible with God, Luke 137. The Lord your God is with you. He's mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing, Zephaniah 317. He's delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we've set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Paul said that, 2 Corinthians 1.10. Why would the Lord go out of his way for one of us? Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence, Psalm 91.3. 
Why? Because when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace with him. Proverbs 16, 7. God is love, and his love is unfailing. Just read 1 Corinthians 13. Be encouraged. That's sure encouraging.